Hi, my name's Mark Stella. Welcome to Little Green Man. This is the first in a seven part series just at lifting the lid off the whole balance the budget doctrine that neoconservatives and neoliberals have been forcing down our throat for the last 30, 40 years, probably more. Balance the budget is something that everybody seems to agree is a good thing, but I'm going to show you that, and not only is it not a good thing, uh, that it is actually can be an incredibly disastrous thing. And it's a starting point to actually bring governments to its knees. Spoilers. Should have said that first. So what is balance of budget? What does that mean? Well, a balanced budget is you've got some public services that need to be paid for. Your running of government, you've also got uh, roads, infrastructure, bridges, that kind of thing, healthcare, um, uh, employment insurance, and all, all these kinds of things that must be paid for. There is a certain level of expense and the government um, raises money for that with taxes, levies, payroll taxes, income tax, and, um, um, and so on. So you have a certain level of services, the government has revenue, income, the taxes and the levies and so forth. And the balance in the budget is that doctrine says that you have to, um, you cannot bring in any, in any more money than you, are, than you need to spend. You have to balance that budget. You can't spend more than that. You can't. And um, if you spend less, then you've got to cut your services so that that budget is kept level. And that's balancing the budget. Now, um, what actually happens is, of course, um, that rarely is that are, are there too many taxes coming in, particularly with the outcry that comes along with the balance of the budget. The outcry is also um, cut taxes, cut taxes, cut taxes. And so you can't raise money when expenses go up, and the expenses do go up for several legitimate reasons. Um, and so when those expenses go up, um, then you have to bridge that gap of it. You've got to pay for it somehow, so you've got a choice. You cut the services or you raise the taxes. A third option is that you, you go into debt. And so everybody has been in this situation one way or another, that you have an expense you want to pay for, you need to buy a car, you need to buy a house, um, there's a gap there, you're not bringing enough money to buy one outright, so you take a loan, you go into debt. So we all do it, and we've all done it, and the majority of people are going to at least have a mortgage um, or a car loan. I think those things are, are pretty, uh, uh, pretty standard. Now the, now the talking point is in all this is that businessmen balance the budget, therefore governments should as well. And therefore, that a businessman or a businesswoman should be employed by the government, sorry, elected into government, so they can run the government like a business and balance the budget. So that, in a nutshell, is what the balanced budget doctrine is about. So, but here's the big question, and it's coming up right here. Do businesses balance the budget? Well, we're told that families do it, and businesses do it, therefore governments must do it too. But think about your own family, your own income. What is in, in that doctrine there of only spending in as much as you bring in, only bringing in as much as you need to spend, is, is a joke. You don't do that. Uh, the only time that you curb your spending is when you're not bringing in enough money. Ideally, and everybody wants this, they want to be paid more so that they can have far more money coming in than they're spending, so they can save and they can you know, maybe have a few luxuries on top of the, ex of the necessary expenses. Everybody wants to bring in more money. And funnily enough, there is not a single for-profit business that balances the budget. Think about that. I mean, you can, it's, it's obvious now I've said it out loud. For profit businesses must bring in more money than its expenses, or it's not making a profit. It, it will cease to exist. And anybody who is running a business, a for profit business, that comes in and says, We've got to cut our revenue to match our expenses, is actually probably wouldn't even get the job. And if he did get the job, he would be fired and ridiculed. And although he'd probably still get his golden parachute. But that's another issue. That's another video right there. So these are false equivalencies. These equivalencies. Families don't do it and certainly don't want to do it, and businesses can't do it, otherwise they would be abject failures. So think of this. So let's put this now in government, in terms of running a government to balance the budget. So you cut the revenue. So taxes, if taxes are high, you cut the revenue to match your expenses. Businesses will never ever do that. Or you can cut your profits, um, uh, Sorry, or you can cut the products in a way that would affect your customer, which you're not going to do 
in a big way, you'll do it in a small way, so that incrementally, so they're not really going to notice. But you don't want uh, to cut your product or your service so much that your customer says, this is garbage, I'm going somewhere else. So there's a balancing act. They want to raise as much money and they can make as many cuts in their um, uh, in the business as, as they can and their expenses so they can maximize profits. So any cuts, um, any, so any cuts to um, revenue would be considered a mass failure by the person or the people running such a business. And if they even get close to balancing their budgets, if they even get close, if those profits just drop, even just a, a few percentage points, there's a chances are that the executive team are going to be fired by the board of directors or by the owner. So that, that would be abject failure. So why, and now taking that into account, then why would businessmen be the perfect people to run a country? or a state or a province, when they've never, ever, ever balanced their budget before, they have no experience in balancing the budget, and they've never, before you put the word government in there, have even considered it an option in business. So why do governments, so why, so, so rather, why do, does the neoconservative and the neoliberals want to force governments to do it? Well, in order to understand that, we now have to move into understanding what government debt is and how it's different from personal debt and per different from business debt. But that is, and that's going to be in part two. Um, so stay tuned. That's coming up. Blue Green Man.